Sure. Um, in, in Kenya, we've, we've become number one in the world rankings for financial inclusion. And that's entirely been on the back of digital financial services. And that's primarily being in PESA. Um, we've got 75% at least now of the economically active adult population using M-Pesa. Transacting most of the GDP each year goes through our platform. Um, we look at it and say that we have four pillars of success. The first is certainty. Um, the understanding of the user that he can use it pretty much everywhere. He can get a consistent user experience. Um, he knows exactly what he's getting. Um, it's the same type of transaction, to, whether he's doing a merchant payment, whether he's doing a person-to-person -person payment, whether he's receiving international money transfer. Critical mass is incredibly important. Um, somebody said out there that if you don't get critical mass, you'll be in critical care. And without critical mass, most of these services just don't get traction. And it doesn't matter whether you're Apple or whether you're in PESA, you need critical mass for that to be successful. You also need good pricing. Um, for the poor, cash is frictionless. Um, there's no third party trying to take a slice of that transaction, putting their hands into your wallet or pocket and taking a bit of the money away. And that's still a problem that we have with, with digital financial services. There's always people to pay. And, and as you interoperate and as you interconnect through switches, there's more and more mouths and more hands wanting a slice of that transaction. Um, and the more we're able to keep that under control and keep the price point right, um, at the very low end, uh, the greater the use. Uh, and then finally, reward and loyalty. Um, rewarding people beyond just being able to do the transaction is another critical success factor. Um, understand the needs of the customers, don't dictate them, and then provide the right product at the right price. In most, in most countries, um, innovation is running ahead of the regulators, and the regulators have two approaches to take. In Kenya, we were extremely lucky. We had an understanding regulator who basically said to us, we don't understand this. We think it has some huge potential, so we're going to have a light touch regulation. Until we get to understand it, we work out the wrinkles, and, and then regulation followed. Uh, and so all the regulation we're under now actually came in after we were able to innovate. Um, so we were extremely lucky and um, you know, the central bank and other regulators in Kenya have, have received massive plaudits for their approach in how they allowed MPESA to take off as the first in the world. Okay, so the technology side, I'm, you know, I don't focus much on that because I believe that technology-led ignition strategies often fail. Um, Customer-focused ignition strategies are the one that worked. So whatever the technology is, in Kenya we use some toolkit, in other markets in PESA uses USSD. I, I believe slightly less success. Blockchain, smock chain, um, I don't really mind, as long as I get the right service for the customer at the right price. Interoperability is an interesting one, because interoperability usually is more around convenience rather than inclusion. Now, there are not many cases where you can point to interoperability as a driver of financial inclusion. What it's done is it's given choice to customers. Choice often comes at a cost. So we do massive interoperability with banks. We're growing interoperability with other mobile networks. But it is not the major driver for inclusion. Um, so, so what we've been doing in the, in the, the first set of meetings and the first uh, output the Digital Financial Services Working Group is putting out has been basically laying the foundational understanding of what the various components of DFS and uh, digital payments, for example, are. Um, the next round is going to be around how you take those and apply them. And I think that's where we'll start to bring some of the learnings from East Africa, particularly saying, what are the parts you need to have in place? So for example, are standards important early? Or is getting a huge ne agent network so you get convenient access for customers more important? Um, interesting question. Well, first off, let's separate those two yeah. um, because the one is highly inflammatory, Bitcoin. Which at the moment, we, we're not interacting with at all. Our regulator has said to us to leave that alone. And the poor can't afford the volatility that that environment has right now. Nearly half of all Bitcoin exchanges have failed within the last six years. 
daily volatility of the exchange rate, none of those are viable or fair for poor customers. Blockchain as a technology, different story. And I see enormous use there for particularly countries that do not have a national identity system. So how do I provide um, identity services for the poor who are being excluded because of global AML, KYC requirements? It's not their fault they don't have an ID document. It's not their fault that they do not have an address. Blockchain is one of the ways that that could be provided. Blockchain will also flatten um, the intermediary chains um, between one transacting party and the other. So people like SWIFT, National Switches, um, the card associations, I think ought to be very worried about blockchain. Um, take Apple Pay right now that runs on top of um, the card association. You know, if they got critical mass at bank, at merchant, they could replace that with blockchain in an instant and cut out that huge cost. Um, I, I see tremendous uh, upheaval coming around blockchain in the future. So if I take our market, for example, um, we're doing millions of transactions. We do about 150 transactions a second, about $100 million a day moves through in PESA. Um, and yet we're only doing about a quarter of a transaction per customer per month in payments to merchant. And that's where the critical mass is. You know, I've got to solve that relevance point, which we haven't done yet. We're working on it. And that's going to take um, different technologies. It's going to take different pricing um, to provide the viability point for a merchant. You know, in the card space, you know, you're looking at an average merchant commission globally of around 2.5% for what we call a mum and boga. This is a street trader. This is a mother typically who will be waking up at 3 in the morning, going to the market to buy some vegetables, and then walking out into the streets to sell those to the populace. You know, she's got tiny, tiny uh, profit margins. And to expect her to pay even 1% just simply doesn't work. And that's one of the reasons why we haven't penetrated that market. It's been too expensive for her to use our services. We need to make mobile, digital financial services as frictionless as cash. It ought to be as easy as handing over a banknote. And it ought to be as cheap as handing over a banknote. That's the challenge. <laughs>